Today we're going to start talking about units of measurement. This is section 2.2 .2 in your books. Now, in measurements we have quantitative information. Quantitative information has to deal with a quantity. And what we'll see is we will have a number and we'll have a unit. Now, it's very important that every number has a unit because a number without a unit is just worthless. Now, an example of this, two meters, we see that there's two, which means it's a number, so therefore we know it's quantitative information. Meters is its unit. So two is a number, meter is a unit, and length is what is being measured. Now, a unit compares what is being measured to a defined measurement standard. The units we have are standards that we use to compare things to. Now, the system that we use in chemistry is called the SI units of measurement. In 1960, they were agreed upon all over the world, and they contain seven base units. We still do have some non-SI units that we use here in the United States. Now, if we look at the base units for length is meters, and we see its symbol and its abbreviation. Mass, we measure in kilograms, symbol and abbreviation. And we have time, which we measure in seconds. Temperature, which we measure in Kelvin. And amounts, we measure in moles. Now, we use prefixes along with bases to get either larger or smaller quantities. Now, some of the prefixes that we'll be using, the capital M is for mega, and it's one million times larger than the bases. The main bases we use are kilograms, liters, or meters. Now, these bases are different than the SI standard bases. Okay? Now, kilo which is a thousand times greater than the bases, which the three bases, remember, are grams, liter, meters. Then we have centi, which is a hundred times smaller, milli, a thousand times smaller, and micro, which is one million times smaller. Sometimes you use a measurement in biology, uh, it's called a picometer, and that would be a billion times smaller. Now, mass. Mass is the measure of the quantity of matter. The SI unit we went over was kilograms. In chemistry, since we deal, deal mostly on a micro scale, uh, we use grams. Now, mass is completely different than weight. Mass is the measure of the quantity of matter. Weight depends on the gravitational pull on that matter. Okay, so it, mass is not dependent on where you are. Weight is dependent. Weight is dependent on where you are in the universe. If you're on the moon, you have a different weight but your mass is still the same. Now length, the SI unit for length is meters. Um, if you go overseas, you'll see that everything is measured in kilometers instead of miles. Now a derived SI unit, it comes from combining base units. And we combine them using either multiplication or division. We see an example of this is area. Area, the formula for it, is length times width. So we'll have meters times meters, which our final unit will be meters squared. Now, volume is a derived unit. The definition of volume is the amount of space occupied by an object. The equation for volume is length times width times height. So therefore, we see we have meter times meter times meter which gives us meters cubed. Okay, In chemistry, again, we're going to be dealing with everything on a smaller scale, so we deal with cubic centimeters, which we see right here, or we'll deal with milliliters. Cubic centimeters and milliliters are interchangeable, and we see that with this conversion factor here. Now, density. Density is the ratio of mass to volume. Density equals mass divided by volume. Mass this is always in grams, and volume can be in milliliters or cubic centimeters. Now, the SI units that they use for mass are kilograms per meter cubed. 
but we use grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter because we're dealing on a small scale. Now, a characteristic property of a substance doesn't change with the amount because as volume increases, mass also increases. So what we see, a characteristic property of density um, or density, which is a characteristic property, doesn't change. If we have a million liters of water, the density of water is still the same. If we have one milliliter, it's still the same. It doesn't change. Now, density usually decreases as temperature increases. Uh, some exceptions to that are ice. Uh, water, specifically in the solid state, floats. Now, here's an example of density. We see that we have aluminum metal that has a mass of 8.4 grams and a volume of 3.1 cubic centimeters. And it wants us to find the density. So we know that our equation equals density equals mass divided by volume. So therefore we'll have 8.4 grams all divided by 3.1 cubic centimeters. And if we plug that into a calculator, we should get somewhere right around 2.7 grams per cubic centimeters. Here's it's written very nice and neat. Now, a conversion factor. A conversion factor is a ratio that comes from a statement of equality between two different units. The way I would explain this is this is what you multiply by to get a desired unit. Now, every conversion factor is equal to one. We see an example here, four quarters equals a dollar. Four quarters and one dollar are the same amount of money. Okay, so if we put them in a fraction and since they're the same, if you multiply something by the same thing, it always equals to one. Now, a conversion factor can be multiplied by other numbers without changing the value of the numbers. We have three dollars, and we change it to twelve quarters. Three dollars and twelve quarters are still the same amount of money, even though we've changed the number, the amount of money is still the same. All we have done is just gotten rid of dollars as a unit and put our new unit of quarters. Now our guidelines for conversion factor, you always consider what unit you are starting with and ending with. You always have to know where you're coming from and where you're going. Two, if you aren't sure what steps to take, write down all the information you know about the start and the end unit to find the connection. This is putting all the puzzle pieces on the table. Can't put a puzzle together without all your puzzle pieces. And thirdly, we see that always begin with the number and unit you are given with a one below it and cancel the units as you go. For an example of these, you can see another video over the packet that I gave you in class.